One, two. Look at me. Uh, one more like that. Yeah, just looking at it. That's great. Yeah, just fixing his ears too. That's great. This is bound to attract the investors. Want to open a serious restaurant and they see photographs like this? No way. The guy's a nutcase. I'm not a nutcase. I'm just an artist. is such a, an innovator and he's on the cutting edge of a lot of things that people want to do but they're, not, they're a little bit afraid of trying them, I think. of almost all the food he makes that if you simply describe it with a straight face it sounds like a put on but if you're in the restaurant and you're eating it and you're thinking about it and you're actually seeing the relationship between the flavors it was often inspired food uh, you don't know if it's good or bad because you've never had anything like it before so you can't really establish um, a, 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 a rating you know if you like it or if you don't like it uh, but you don't know if it's a good interpretation of it or a bad interpretation of it because it's the first time it's ever been done. It takes one person to put it out there. You, somebody's got to go first. Yeah, it is food. I have no comment. One of the great joke dishes for all people who wanted to make fun of Paul Liebrandt was his signature amuse bouche, which was a, a little ball of uh, wasabi apple sorbet with some Malden salt sprinkled over it and uh, then a waiter would come over with a dainty little precious teapot-like thing that he would pour olive oil over the sorbet. Now, it sounds precious and ridiculous, but almost everybody who ate that little morsel thought it was the best thing they'd ever tasted. I usually take the common sense view that if it tastes good, it's worth pursuing and trying to figure out why this is good and what the chef is up to. Hello! Sanchez up on that. My name is Paulie Brandt. I'm a chef. That's my occupation. I cook. This is a powder of Fisherman's Friend. It just cleans the whole mouth out. It's a little extra thing. It's just nice to, you know, cleanse it out. So it gives them time in between calls as well. See, plate's clean. So it's always a good thing. Two little pumpkin sorbet. I'm at Papillon just as a sort of fill-in place, you know, just in between finding the right setup. I mean, a chef that doesn't cook is a very miserable chef. I don't want to, I don't want to go down that path. Right now in New York, after September 11th, restaurants are closing every day. But as the months go on, people will start to go out again and the opportunities that people, because people will get fed up with the whole comfort food. That's what everybody's doing right now, you know? Not so creative, simpler food. You know, in times of crisis, people want stuff which they can relate to. You know, they don't want artistic stuff. You, you coming to expand that? Yeah. Okay. The most important thing is I can still cook the food I want, and so when it does come time, touch wood to 
have that set up, whether it be in six months or a year, you know, people know who you are still. They haven't forgot about you. You build a clientele of the people going to come in and, you know, eat the food. I don't know why a place like that would hire someone like Paul Lee Brandt, but there he was, totally out of context. Smash the crumble all over the top there like that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And this is actually the blood from the duck, OK? Which is damn good flavor. Well, the choice tonight was to go to you or to go to George to, to or to what? go to Danielle. Or... It's been well, I'm touched. Came here. I'm touched. I am. Thank you. Well, it's the most interesting food in New York. Thank you. It's the Relais Chateau Guide. The most prestigious guide in the world. I think I could be in the guide like that. What do you think? Like that. Hmm. One day, is Jean Georges? No, definitely not. Not me. He's doing something with food that you really didn't see get done before. And there's a few chefs, I mean, I know of a few others around the planet who are kind of on the same, again, deconstructive, like what Duchamp did to art, what, what happened to, to music with atonality and serial music. You know, it went from, you know, these, these, you know, these octaves to 12 tones. Well, that didn't happen in food at all. And, you know, Paul's kind of doing something that's on the edge. You're one of these guys that's taking this, this what had been this traditional dogmatic recipe driven mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. and reconstructing it taking it apart putting it back together again this is new for food where'd you get this idea where did this come from uh the guys i trained with back in europe talk about that because you have a, you do resumes yeah. impressive as well. um i worked with some very good people back in europe like three star michelin restaurants but very traditional very classical obviously to very high standard but same the same most places were doing the same stuff. And I worked with a gentleman called Pierre Gagnier in Paris, and this was the guy that really broke the mold for me and got me thinking on a different way. What I try to do is you have your base, your traditional dish, whatever, your flavor combinations that you know work, and twist them, tweak them, take something out, put something that you wouldn't normally associate in. Doesn't taste so bad, does it? What made you think of clam and pig cheek? Well, something like, thank you, something like pig cheeks, braised piece of meat, obviously, as you can see. I wanted something very astringent to go with it, to cut the, you know, this is the braised kind of heaviness of it. Um, and I used to do pig cheek and caviar, which is really, really nice. But, um, you know, caviar's a bit expensive and we're on a budget here, so I thought, well, what can I use which has got a nice astringent flavor? Clams, you know. And they're pretty cheap. And this is the uh, pumpkin curry sauce. It's very simple. I mean, it's very, very simple, 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 simple. When you have flavor combinations that are not your everyday um, idea of, of how you perceive it should be, that throws people off. This is a gelée of pink grapefruit over the top. Thank you very much. Yeah. My place is here in the kitchen with the guys, you know? You'd be surprised how many uh, big chefs are never in their kitchen, ever. You know, they come in, they whatever, and that's it. Believe me, I know I work for a few. Uh, they don't actually, they don't even in there, let alone cook, they're just not here, you know? At Papillon, I gave him two stars, which is really the upper limit that a, a dump like that could hope for. There was some inspired cooking going on there, and it's the, the just strange stuff. See the review today? See, I'm a two-star chef. We can change all that, though. All we have to do is do that, yeah? That's what it will be. Give me 
be the right setup. See, look, he needs a bigger show. Paul knew coming on here that he was going to probably go to two stars without a doubt because of the room. For us to get two stars was absolutely amazing when you look at the reviews that uh, Grimes has given out since that, like the Ritz Carlton has gotten two stars. Hello, Angel. Garniture, civil play. Come on, Liam, where are you? Let's go. I was born in Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. I was raised in London, England. But I didn't really have a family life. I have no brothers or sisters, no other family living in England. It was a very lonely childhood. That's the truth. Very lonely. My mum and dad divorced when I was very young. I went to boarding school from seven, where the food can best be described as if you could imagine yourself in Siberia in a gulag. That's when they still had the cane. Come on, Chris, put some effort into it, please. Right. Small ladle. Uh, 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 small ladle. Blame the ladle, Chris, that's it. A good carpenter does what? Blames everyone else but himself. There was no food culture for me. I have no food culture in my family. No one's ever cooked professionally for a living. I didn't grow up putting peas at my mother's feet, no. Not at all. This, uh, so we're braising the fish in oil. It's wrapped very tightly and it's what the French call sous vide. It's like, absolutely, there's, there's no oil touching the fish, but this is cooked. This is 51 degrees centigrade right now. You can feel it's just it's, it's absolutely soft as hell. And we just let it sit, um, and we just cook them very, 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 very slowly, braising them, and the idea is it keeps it one texture, not the whole fish. It doesn't dry out, and you put your fork into it, and it just melts. It's absolutely tender. Unwrap the fish, please. My father wanted me to go into the military, but I like to cook. What can I say? Some people just have a natural affinity for something. They enjoy something more than other things, you know? I never wanted to regular nine to five kind of, you know, sit in an office or, you know, work in a record store or some shit like that. I never wanted that. I like the buzz. I like the excitement of the kitchen. And I worked at Lascago restaurant in London and, and I, I looked at the food and I'm like, that's what I want to do. We were buying Marco Pierre White's White Heat when I was still at school and looking at the food and the beauty of those plates and the pictures that were captured, which still holds up today. It's just like, that is what I want to be. I guess you could have said, when it comes to cooking, I went into the, the culinary equivalent of the Special Forces. For the pulao, Tom. Kitchens are run military precision, and to get the standards, it's the only way to do it. Make sure when you come down, you come down nice dead straight. Make sure this is evenly dispersed, yeah? Dip it in, just have a glazer, and then cut that in mm -hmm. half, okay? Right. Um, and Friday night is not a good night. Not a good night at all. So it's gonna be very busy. You're not, you're not gonna see the true stuff. And it's more sort of, people order, you know, the more safe things. So. Exactly, you want to be here in a week when the foodies come in and we get to play around with some good stuff and you see what the real stuff is. It's nice. Avid fans calling me up. Just like, oh, phenomenal. Oh, are you single? I'm like, sorry, I'm married to my kitchen. Tuesday, so. Well, we came in at an unfortunate time economically. We got rave reviews for the food, but unfortunately, it's become so hard in summer and not economically viable to keep doing what we were doing. We decided to run this as a neighborhood friendly restaurant whereby anyone walking in the street can now look at a menu, sit down, and see something that they can have. Not everybody's going to go out and spend $48 or usually about $70 a head on food every day of the week. Um, at the same time, we didn't have a bar menu that was capable of suiting the bar people. If they wanted a plate of fries, we couldn't give it to them because the chefs weren't into cooking fries because they were doing such high-end food and high-quality food, which is understandable in my opinion too, hence we made an executive decision.
Those hamburgers go, that's a pretty fucking good hamburger. It's quarter past seven. I'm gonna do a french fry tasting for him. We're gonna line up seven different types of french fry with different salts and peppers and, and they can decide which one they like the best. Touche. The french fry tasting. Do you think a lot of people appreciate gastronomic food? No. Not really. You need the, the, you need the style of restaurant for it, you know? And, uh, you know, this restaurant is, I mean, it, for what they want to do right now, it suits it. But for me, obviously, it's, it's tough. You know, with all the hard work I put in here and uh, to see it all just like being thrown away. Still, it's not my restaurant, you know. It's not my decision, so, you know, I accept it. That's it. And now we enter the land of the French fry. I never get lucky, ever. That's my problem. I'm too nice. I'm a nice guy. I get to the friend zone and not the end zone. We don't get everything in life. In this business, it's very hard to have a relationship. It's very hard to meet people because, you know, it does take up a lot of hours. I'm on my own here. No family, not really any friends because I've worked so much. I think for me, socially, it's difficult to kind of not talking, but sort of, you know, that initial, you talk to someone, okay, you, you, you like them, whatever, you know, you think maybe possible girlfriend material, whatever. And you're talking, but then once you get past that initial sort of, what's your name, where do you live, that kind of thing, you kind of like, uh, it's not that I'm a boring person or anything, it's just that maybe, I don't know, you know, I, I get shy or I'm sort of like, uh, <laughs> Uh... So, best of luck, Paul. Merci. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh... Thanks for being okay. here. <laughs> <laughs> it's my last night at Papillon. Time to move on to big and better things. Now it's time to get back into serious cooking at a real restaurant because you can't stay doing this sort of thing forever. You know, it's uh, it's making your brain go to jelly. It really is. It was well, we expected it really. Didn't expect him to say if you know, there's not much you can show us doing, you know, burger and chips and things. This is exciting, isn't it? I'm, a, I'm what I like to think of myself as a culinary mercenary, on hire to the highest bidder. <laughs> and there's no cabs. What the fuck is in this? Praline, lemons, papers. No more lemon oil. juice? More lemon juice? A little yeah. drop of soya in there, yeah? Right. Yep. Since Papillon, life has been um, up and down, difficult. You know, um, New York City, as we know, has been going through a very unique time in its history, uh, post 9 11, economy, etc. And I opened up my own business for consulting. Um, other things as well. I was consulting for a marshmallow company, doing gourmet marshmallows, which was fun, actually. So a lot of stuff like that. But it, it, it does, it, it does not what I want to do. I've been looking for the right thing. I've been looking for 
the right position and I've had many offers, but this has felt like the best one for me, for what I need. So that's what I'm doing now in December of 05 is getting back on track to what I wanted to do. And I hope, I really hope that I can. I've been brought on board here to be the chef director of this restaurant. The restaurant's called Gilt. It's the old Lesotho 2000 space, which was a very famous restaurant in the New York Palace Hotel. It's, it's a challenge, I'll say that, dealing with hotel people and non-restaurateurs. It's, uh, it, it's a whole another can of worms I've never opened up before, but we're opening up now. So, okay, so lunch menu, let's place. give them one madeleine, one of these guys, cochini marshmallow, one katafi. We give them a little oyster, one oyster, with a little lemon foam. Block of cream cheese, apple chips. I'm sorry, I think it tastes like cream cheese. I'm gonna fix it. I'm not no, 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 knocking no. it. I'm just saying for me, well, it tastes like Philadelphia. Okay. It's not there yet. Yeah, I know it's not there yet. Okay. This is a great opportunity. Yeah, it's a great stage. My guys are pulling 18 hours a day. I'm pulling 20 hours a day. We're doing about seven days a week for the past month and a half right now. So we're gonna make sure we get it this time around. Is the butter ready? Is the salt on the butter? Still the butter is curry jar. Okay, let's get everybody on the line. Okay, first table's in. Good evening, how are we doing this evening? Fantastic. When I come up with the idea, it's not solely just the cooking of the food and plop it on the plate and go, it tastes really good, no. It, the taste comes to do with the cerebral part of it. I'm thinking of what story am I telling here? What, what, what emotion am I trying to stimulate? I try to bring out the emotions of wonderment and discovery. It's not just a beautifully cooked piece of fish. I mean, there are lots of people that can cook a nice piece of fish. What else am I doing with this? And I don't mean obscuring it where you don't know it's a piece of fish, but the emotion with the side dish over here and, and the texture of something that we put on the plate here and maybe the shades of the colors on the plate, whatever it is, the whole package. It's the whole sensory experience of eating the food. This is the uni, okay? Yep. Do you take that? Yeah, and then walk away with this, okay? Okay, ready? Is this all going together? For my opinion, guilt was light years from where he had been before. It was it was uh, m more um, uh, more based in in, in, in traditional uh, technique, in traditional flavors, but still with wonderful surprises and, and, and new new flavor compositions. And the execution became even better. Uh, so it was a cuisine now that was really expressing a personality, not so much a um, I don't want to say a rebellion. Um, but it, it really is expressing his personality and, and his mature points of view. The portions are a little larger than we would normally do, but that's because it's for our beloved GM. Things hit to me, this was my restaurant. I can do what I want. Since me coming here, everything has been, we want it like this, like this, like this, like this, and it's, kind of walking around feeling like your balls are on a chopping block. You never know when they're gonna come down and be like, yeah, you know what, uh, that, that tasting menu thing, we don't want it. And we want this, and that's basically what it is. So you either say yes and you do it, or you leave, and there really isn't any other serious options on the table right now. And I've waited so long for something like this, just to have it turn out like this, it's just, <laughs> I gotta figure that like there's, you know, there's, there's, there's someone up there like have, taken, having a laugh, basically, you know, playing a joke. I mean, it's just... There are people who want to invest in chefs, want them to open restaurants, who are not necessarily in the restaurant business. And, I don't, you know, it's, 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 a difficult, it's difficult to have somebody be your partner who doesn't understand the industry. You're building a craft, you're building a business, but it's also a brand and a craft and, a, and an, art, an art that's been sort of worked on. If I'd had invested and looked at the bottom line all the time, the, the fat duck would have lasted, well, it would have lasted a year. I'd either, he'd have either pulled the plug, or what would have happened is said, well, you can't serve that. Then people aren't eating that. How many of those we sold this month? You can't serve that. 
That cat, you can't buy that cat. What's the point of that? That's ridiculous. Too many staff. But, he, but I, I need this bloke. He's really, no, I don't care. It's too many staff. It would have absolutely strangled the restaurant. The Times has a four-star system, um, which is really a little bit more than four stars because there is zero stars, and there are actually gradations of zero stars. Um, to start down there, you can, you can give a restaurant no stars with the one-word descriptor poor, uh, fair, or satisfactory. Um, and then one star uh, has always been defined as good, uh, two stars very good, uh, three stars excellent, and four stars um, extraordinary. Melon. Melon sous vide, and then uh, olive consomme. Uh, green olive. Mm, it's nice. It was at that time probably the most ambitious restaurant in the city. Four stars would have been a home run. I think three stars would have been the least they expected. For me, the difference between three and four stars, or between two and three stars for that matter, is the measure of enthusiasm you feel for the restaurant, the intensity of the joy of being there, and uh, how much you'd like to come back. All refracted through price. I mean, if I was having the time of my life at a restaurant and it was costing me $5,000 just for me, um, I'd probably have to be experiencing sexual ecstasy at the same time for 45 minutes on end for me to understand why I was paying $5,000 for that. Um, but within the bounds of reasonable, understandable prices, um, you're really just rating um, the, the, the scope of the accomplishment of the restaurant and the intensity of the pleasure you feel. There were dishes in which it seemed that the number of, of, of layers, for lack of a better word, the number of ingredients um, was always a little bit too high, was always a little bit tilted in the direction of, let me show you just how much I can pull off. Let me, just, let me show you just, just how much I can kind of fold origami-like into this dish. You know, there's steakhouses, there's bistros that get two stars for doing nothing, for slinging hash. Grimes is completely different to Bruni. Grimes liked this. He, he liked the elegance. He liked that French style. He liked the, the formality of getting dressed to go to dinner and have an experience. Bruni, you read in his views, he likes uh, neighborhoods, smaller, um, you know, very downscale, nothing too formal. That's what he likes. OK, chicken. Not big enough? There you go. Um, can we can we talk uh, in about half an hour, please? Thanks very much. Bye bye. Sorry about that. Who's that? Uh, that's for a photo shoot for Biz Bash. They're doing an article about something or other. Look, this is the dichotomy of my life. Yeah, Vogue magazine does three-page spreads on me, and all the rest of it, and yet I'm unemployed. I'm still, I'm still pretty young, but still, you know, I mean, at, at this age, I should be a little more stable right now. All right, let's just, just do a, the, the first one, the tonic elderflower pearl, or amoeba, or however you want to call it. This is a process called spirification, which is in the presence of sodium and calcium ions, when they combine, you form a skin, so you can encapsulate liquid. Using this technique, you get a pearl of encapsulated vodka tonic. Oh my god. Mm. 
so cool. Is that good? Yeah. It's yeah. like doing a shot, right? But it's so refreshing. <laughs> it's not just sit down and have a drink and, and eat something. It's it's not life changing, but it's certainly something which maybe will just make you smile or it'll stick in your mind. You pass this along, please. What is inspiring my, right now? The thought that I might be able to actually one day get back in the kitchen and cook. That's the inspirational thought that I have right now. The hope and dream that my career has not completely gone down the toilet, as it seems to sort of every two years, really. We are in Tribeca at a um, space for my next restaurant. Central Space is formerly a restaurant called Marche, which is a very well-known restaurant in New York City. My potential partner is Juni Pran, who's the owner of Nobu. We went out, we've had dinner, we've chatted numerous times, and, and slowly but surely, we're building the uh, business relationship. Check with me in two months. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna make sure you're here on the opening night. Oh. My name is Drew Naporent. Uh, I grew up here in New York City and got in the restaurant business because my father was an attorney with the State Liquor Authority in New York City, and he used to take us out to some of the most glorious restaurants, and I was caught up in the theater of food and knew it was something I wanted to do from a very early age. My whole drive and ambition was one day to open my own restaurant, so Morache opened with a young chef, David Boulet, and seven weeks after we opened, we got three stars. Between 1990 and 2007, we've opened 26 other restaurants. So Morache began the ascension of my career. We must have gotten three stores. Yeah, because everybody's running three stores. We must have opened this after we got three stores. The reason I want to reopen this restaurant, the reason I want to work with Paul Liebrandt, comes from the basic instincts that I've had from the beginning which if I'm going to distinguish myself, if I'm going to do a better job than everybody else, then I have to be associated with the best people. Got me interested in Paul. Well, over a period of time, people that I trust uh, sort of talked to me about Paul, and then this last group was very convinced that it might be something we should do. So that's more up to him than it is to me, I think. What do you think? He's younger, I'm old. 50, 50, we'll call it that, yeah. I think he's paid his dues. I think he's probably been humbled and has a greater level of humility. And, and I'm a great believer in redemption. America is a redemptive country. We, we, we first of all, build people up to rip them down, to build them up again. So I, I'm egotistical enough to believe that I can put him on the right path of redemption. But to confirm that uh, at this absolute moment would, again, be premature. The inspiration of the design is uh, sort of the urban house and you're coming into somebody's living room. Uh, it has a kind of classic French style to it, but it's reinterpreted in a very clean, modern, soft lines and not at all fussy way. Show me the drawing that you like the most. Like the one that if we said, we one. love this one. It's the last one, You know, right? show me that one and then say, if, if, if I heard you say, let's go with that one, I would be the happiest. Well, the, the one that's most elegant right. design-wise, it has one, many, many less seats, so you're not going to like it. Yeah, I mean, we can do anything if we want to do this as a not-for-profit. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this restaurant is different because at least Drew's done restaurants, many restaurants, varying degrees, fine dining, low dining, whatever, but at least there's that common thread of, okay, I understand the dynamics of how a restaurant runs, as opposed to, I eat in restaurants, I have some money, or oh, I think I should go do one. I think the restaurant will look nice, despite the budgetary construction. I think it will. I think it will. It's all gonna come down to the service and the food. I just want my one star Michelin in the first year, that's all. That'll make me very happy. Paul and I met at Gilt and started dating shortly after. When he started this project, he asked if I would be interested in working with him in terms of front of the house. It's been about two years now, and we just signed a lease on a two years more, so I guess we're stuck with each other. Would you like a cocktail? He's Paul. He's 
just the way he is. He gets up in the morning, drinks his tea, and starts writing menus, and shoots ideas at me, and sometimes I'm paying attention, and sometimes I'm not. If I don't make them, who's gonna make them, so? I gotta make sure my girlfriend is happy. Isn't that right, sweetie? Mm -hmm. This is not really how you would make it in the restaurant. This is very sloppy. I apologize for my technique. It's not what it should be. She has a phenomenal palate. Really, really, really good palate for food and for wine. No, you do. Yeah. You do. Yeah, Trust me. I mean, I, I like to think I have a pretty decent palate. Really? And what? Your palate's decent? You don't think it is? I think it is. You know, the whole age thing of, well, you know, working together and you, you, you know, we live together. But, you know, I, uh, it, it's really nice to have that person that understands you and believes in you. And you just, you have that mutual respect. I don't think we'd see each other if no. we worked anywhere else. We wouldn't. We, we see each other for about 20 minutes. And we have a little baby. Come up here, my baby. Come up here, my little one. Come here, my boy. Here's my adventure. Spencer here has made me want to be a better person. I swear to God. I mean, look at him. Look how innocent and sweet he is. Look at him. How could anybody not want to be a better person than the little one here? Yes. Well, today was uh, important because uh, we decided to go public. We're either going to be sitting here in 30 days with a big smile on our face saying we're ready to go, or we're going to be sitting here making some excuses. Awesome. So uh, they're telling me this kitchen will be ready in 10 days. I don't think so. I'm, I'm not so sure. 10 days, I'm not so sure. I'm nervous. And, and the nerves are good because that shows that, you know, you're, all, you're, you're taking it seriously. I'm not, you know, complacent with any of this. It's nerve wracking. I see this coming together now and I'm like, shit, I gotta get a staff together. And I already have decided to get the staff, but you know, it's still like, I've done it before, but every time it's still nerve wracking. I mean, people when they come in for the first time, once it's lit fully, are gonna be, wow. It's beautiful. It's very sharp. We're at my house, one of Drew's restaurants. This is our test kitchen right here. This one burner and uh, we have one plug. So it's kind of hard for us to do a lot of stuff here. But you know, we're getting small stuff done here. We're gonna go through a lot of little things in the beginning to, until we figure out exactly what we're looking for. Nice. Oh! Oh my God. Okay, we don't do that. Man, that is vile. Oh, that's fucking garbage. What are you guys thinking? He's got a lot riding on this, you know? So he's, he's very difficult to deal with sometimes. You know, he's very demanding in what he wants, but it's to be expected. No. You don't like it? No. You want to look at something else? Yeah. We've been working three weeks now. It's a constant adjustment on everything. We don't have a set recipe, and that's that's it. We look, we learn, we work it until we get something we like. Better. Let's do it. Clean broccoli. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Good. Nice. I went pull back the, back the sesame. Pull back. The I got on my tongue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bit too much. I'm happy with them. They're, they're, Doing a great job. They're picking everything up nicely. They're young, they're energetic, they're hungry to learn, and, and that's great. 
And now it's just going over the same thing again and again and again and again until they can do it with their eyes closed. That means once we get in here, hopefully end of this week, begin next week, it's like, okay, make 50 portions of this, that, and the other thing, execute, and they've done it, and they know exactly how to do it. So then it's a question of just bringing it all together and just the aesthetic of plating it and working over there. Keep it kind of tight, okay? Square plate for sure. I think so, what do you think? I yeah? Think Maybe we cut these a bit longer like that, okay? Right. A little narrower, a little long. Uh, Ryan's fine, yeah, he denotes what it is. Yeah, it's fine. Is this the same size we did before? No, I thought the one we made before was a tiny bit bigger than this. What are these right now? He uh, likes everything perfect and very neat. Seems very down to earth so far. But we'll see what happens when we get in there. <laughs> these are my notebooks. These are, you know, this is a typical notebook here of just these are lots of scribbled notes as we're in the as we're in the kitchen and then we go and refine them and put them down and we do little diagrams. This is uh, this is just different dishes. This this is like really quick, just ideas like shorthand, and then I'll do more detailed stuff, and then we will then take those ideas and then start to work with them in the kitchen. I use you know I mean look here's a good example. This is a book that I just got on vegetables. Okay, look at the colors on that on that photo. That's just vegetables. For example, I open it right here. That's the guy who I work with in Paris, Pierre Gagnier. Look at this dish here. Look at the colors. That's, that's beautiful. It says summer to me. It's vibrant. If I'm thinking springtime, I'm thinking, there you go, vegetables. They, they color the plate themselves naturally. <laughs> scallops? Dry scallops? Um, would you fucking calm down, young man? I told you I'm gonna sort you out. Don't worry, okay? You're getting lights in here. I can't do everything right now. Okay, but this is nice. Okay. Fucking hell, that looks nice. Look yeah. at that, look at that. That's on, really nice. One. Look at the color, Rob. Rob, look at that, man. That's fucking beautiful. It's like Kobe beef. Fucking cold, mushy. It's cold, it's mushy, it's dry, it's not glazed. Looks like shit on the fucking plate. Out of my fucking way, out of my way, out of my way. I can't do this myself. How can you honestly pass that up to me? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out right now. It looks so fucking good on Saturday, and now it looks like dog shit on the fucking plate. Come here, both of you. Come the fuck here. You send me two fucking pieces up like that again, I'll put you both heads through that fucking wall, okay? That's embarrassing. That's not the standard that I want. And especially when we did it nine times on Saturday. I am only as good as the weakest person in my kitchen. And right now, yeah? Embarrassing. Do it again. Now. It was very intense. It's really energized. He may not be mad at you, but he's just very passionate and very, you know, there's a lot of force behind it. So it's just, yeah, it's, you're, you're pretty used to it. Chefs get mad, they yell at you, they scream. I mean, he doesn't throw stuff, he doesn't hit you, which is, that's, that's good, because there are chefs who do that, so. Frederick, Frederick, come on. Let me, let me see you care. Let me see the passion, yeah? And for God's sake, smile. You totally get used to being yelled at. You look forward to it, actually. Do it for me. It's hot in the kitchen. It's physical, mentally taxing. We got one chance every night to get it right for the customers which are paying and expecting perfection. It's like putting on a stage performance. Oh, oh, underneath, my dear. Underneath, yeah? Like this. Always hold it underneath, okay? I think 90% of people that were to actually come and work in a kitchen at this level would be horrified at how much work it is and how many little minute details there are just to get ready to open the door every single night. It's done, 63. Don't you want an hour? No. Just the dark meat. Yeah. 
you don't open the door and you've just got like a wealth of just like super talented, super dedicated people that will just kill themselves for you. You, you don't find that. I mean, when we work in the kitchen, we're working 18 hours a day, six, seven days a week. And it's a huge sacrifice. And these guys aren't making a lot of money. So you gotta be really dedicated. You gotta be really, really give up whatever else you're doing and dedicate yourself to working here for two years, three years, whatever it is, and just really commit yourself. It's very hard to find people that will do that. Very hard. Gentle, don't fucking freak out or get nervous, yeah? Just, you know how to do this. You know how to do it, okay? Lovely. You don't have time to do anything else besides work. Like, your bank, you can't call your bank, you can't get mail. I mean, it's, my work life's going really well, but the rest of my life isn't doing so well. So, it's sort of a toss up. But I'm coping with it. Where's, where's my egg? Egg Johnny, can we finish this, please? Egg Johnny, egg, 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 egg. So just to confirm, we're doing a beef, sweetbreads, bass, compadre scallop. Okay. Arnie, that is fucking retardedly good. Can you grab my camera, please? It's beautiful, Arnie. It's so freaking simple, but it's so zen. The whole thing looks green. Everybody's, everybody's face looks green. And when you put like a rare piece of beef or a medium piece of beef, people are gonna look at it, they're not gonna really, really know. They wanna be able to see clearly. It should be a nice, subtle light that actually accentuates the food. Now you've got like grates over the top of the goddamn food. So it's like fucking goddamn Budokan, right? Where you don't need to see the food, yeah? It's a nightclub. Look at this. If I sit back, I've got a shadow here as well. No good. I'm not difficult. Oh my God, so difficult. Fuck off, I'm not difficult. I'm not difficult. I'm passionate and I know what I want in life. Difficult. I only want the best. <laughs> I'm easy going. I want the best of everything, okay, that's all. On, let's That's old school. He's the only guy that does it by hand with real gold leaf like that, apparently. This looks really good in here, I've got to say. It looks three stars to me. Yeah, we'll see. I'd like to get three stars. It'll be like a little coup de grace for me that guilt we didn't get it, but, you know, with all that money and stuff, and then with this, hopefully we do get it, based on the food and the service. I'm trying to keep it very minimalist, very zen, very, you know uncomplicated, recognizable. You can see everything that's on the plate, you understand it. Honey creme, radish, marcona almond, violet hill egg confit, huckleberry black olive fondant potato, squab, chestnut cream, smoked bacon, panda piece, milk. Okay. I think the menu's too foodie. What do you mean? I.e., you have to be a foodie to pick something on this menu. Probably. Yeah? Yeah. In all honesty, yes. Okay, how can I make it not quite as foody? Well, I don't think we should mess with it too much. The, these dishes are so well thought out and so composed mm. that it's almost like you're not used to that anymore because... I mean, everybody's so slides on the plate, huge, rustic and, yeah. Huge trend toward comfort mm. and casual, and we are sort of going in the other direction, and that's the... Mm. I think it's about time. I wonder what Frank Bruni will make of it. This will go over his head again. I it guarantee looks like you. you've already decided what Frank Bruni's going to make of it. I just, I, you know, he likes, you know, spaghetti and meatballs, and I'm just not that kind of a chef. I never have been, never will be. Doesn't mean I'm, it's bad. It's just I'm not that kind of a guy. What are you going to do? That's the practice. This is, yeah, That's this is beautiful, Ani. That's beautiful. But how long did it take you to plate that? Do another one right now. The fish is there. I think it needs to come down a little bit. You should all be facing the, the same, same direction. Way. Yeah. He's into everything going. See, maybe we gotta move that cucumber out of there. Roll it in the. 
Hey, that's nice. Hey, that's nice, yeah? That's nice, you. Huh? It's on its way. The dishes they're doing this evening are the scallop dish. These are diver scallops from Maine, which are very gently cooked on the plancha. They have these baby little winter radishes with them, which are raw and crunchy. What are we eating, Olivia? This is a um, gruzier with Mornay sauce and green olives and noir. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Hey, young man. Yes. Those aren't fucking cooked, yeah? Hey, are you okay today? Uh, yeah. What's the matter? Nothing. Just uh, had a late night last night. Why? What were we doing last night? I was with some lady chef. Okay. I'm fine though. Good. You look like shit today, if I'm honest, yeah? Okay. Ladies come and go, yeah, but the career is constant. You should get yourself a good steady girlfriend again, yeah? I, yeah? I Set your head right, yeah? Stop playing the field, yeah? It's a mugs game, my friend, yeah? You're gonna go home every night empty-handed, yeah? I felt it today. It was not fun. Well, I'm, I'm sick, A, I'm, I'm exhausted, B, but all in all, I mean, it, it could be worse. We'll be out of here by one. Be disciplined with yourself, okay? Every day, for you, not for me, but for you. Every service, for yourself, I want to be better. Those want to be quicker, I want to be more precise. One taste, 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 more, better. And then it, it doesn't even try anymore, it just becomes that way. And that's when you start to become really good at what you do, yeah? Okay? Of the reviews are in, they're over with, and we can actually settle down and cook. Let's just do what we do. We are who we are. We're cooking great food, and we're going to get three stars in. Okay? You better believe that. Okay? All right. Go home. Yes. Yes. Real. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's real. It's been good. It's been... Oh, what? That's it? You're done? No, I'm not done. Sure, I'm done. I'll see you Monday. I'm done. history here which is good but we're gonna make some of our own okay openings as you all know are the most important time of any restaurant now it's up to everybody here to really come in and focus as a team every day and push ourselves to really do something here which can really take on the big boys yeah so let's see it Hey guys, guys, take one deep breath because this will be the last gas of air you have for the next three weeks. Three weeks? Can I get that in writing? <laughs> Tonight we are open to the public. And guess what? It doesn't matter what we think, it matters what they think. All right, everybody, come on. Lee Brands. What? You either have to click, it has to become instantaneously a favorite, otherwise you're gonna be lost in the shuffle. The Giridon, please. I apologize. Like you're holding yourself up. Yes. Very unelegant. Hands behind the back, alert. Okay, thank you. Rob, yeah. can you give me that beef first, then give me a sweetbread? Okay? Wow. 
Thank you very much. God, we wish you good luck. Cheers. Thank you very much for coming in. Good luck. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Not bad for opening night, right? Nothing came back. Nobody got yelled at tonight. It's good. I think it'll be good. Corton, can we help you? Corton, how many were in the party tonight? I could put your name on a wait list if you'd like. Yes, please. Don't take it unless you're going to be here at 5.30, though. Why don't you eat first and then go to the movies? He wants to keep taking, and I said we're For not, tomorrow? Yes, we're not prepared to take, so I think you should say something. Sure. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to take him, OK? Definitely spirits are high, and you know, everybody's at the foods. Everything's coming out a lot better. You see everybody smiling a little more. We all went out that night, celebrated. It was nice. <laughs> OK. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I've never, ever, ever had a restaurant, except maybe, maybe Nobu, that has uniformly gotten this much critical acclaim all at once. But what's missing? The New York Times, the paper of record, which reaches the most vast audience and the most important audience. Whether we want to appreciate that or not, that's in fact the case. We're excited. Now we just gotta get ready for Bruni. Let me grab the phone. Where Ganya sat. Right here. 27. Him and his wife. He's like this. I watched him right there. He's like this. He's like. Oh, like this. It's awesome. He ran back to the kitchen twice to go say hello and like, and then at the end of the meal, I I, I came out to say, you know, and he's like, oh, he comes up, grabs the seat, says, sit, 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 sit. We sat down and we were chatting for like an hour. He, you know, he didn't remember that I had worked for him. <laughs> you know, he recognized the face, but he didn't. He, he was a little, he's like that, he's a little. I'm like, you changed my life. I told him those words, and you changed my life because of you, because of the mentality and what you showed me that I just, it's like, thank you. So it's good. Oh, yes, that's very nice. Even for Frank Bruni, this is going to be over his head. Even, you know. There's nothing over the top of that. There's just nothing really at all, well. but it's very original in its own yes. way, which people are visual. If they don't recognize it, it's, they get all jittery. Thank you. He never ever use the same name twice. But, for instance, if it's Stephen Allen, you might get a reservation, Allen Stephen. So he does flip it once in a while. The phone numbers tend to be uh, wrong numbers a lot. So even that's a little bit of a flag. Good evening, Porton. Can you have phone numbers, please? We have Burr, one Burr, suspicious Burr. reservation, uh, Timothy you... Burr. Oh, Tim Burr. Burr. You know, Drew kind of pointed it out, but, you know, I didn't notice. <laughs> You know, Drew's a little more Bruni aware than I am. Look, here's the reason why it's better to know when they come, although in most cases, it'll be a surprise. What you don't want to do is one day wake up, pick up the New York Times, and read your obituary. Now, listen, uh, McWhorter. Yep. Did, did McWhorter call you again today? No. Okay, just, that's, where'd it go? That's the one to keep an eye on, you know? Okay, where's McWhorter? Right there. Is there any way of doing a phone where it doesn't show our phone number? Yes. Dial the number. I'm sorry. It's him. The number you have reached, area code 212. Yeah, he is a guy who's very clever. Very clever. Well, we don't know, but uh, let's help. Let's get it over there. the reservation was made two days before and um, yeah. when he came in we were made <laughs> made aware of it very quickly though <laughs> yeah it's a surprise
he didn't get up and clap his hands here, but you know, some sign of, of enjoy, you know, enjoyment would have been good. He's, he's a difficult person to read. He's very insular. He doesn't say please or thank you. He won't look you in the eye. Um, he's very dismissive. Here's the thing that concerns me more than anything. It's not the type of dining experience that he seeks or likes. He came in last week, day before Thanksgiving. Thinks that the chef won't be here. Thinks maybe he's taking the night off. Or uh -huh. whatever. Sir. Doesn't know that I'm British. He planted a uh, a towel on the floor of the bathroom. You know, to see if we check our bathrooms. What he does is he'll drop it at the beginning of the meal, and at the end of the meal he'll go back and see if it's been done. So we got that. We picked it up. But then he left a paper clip on the actual sink, which is really tricky. And we got that, too. Just like, what is he doing? He said, I think he's checking for gum. You sure? I'm like, well, look at them. They're both underneath the skirt, like. Oh, this is so exhausting. I, 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 I don't know about you. I find this like, I'm going to be happy when it's all over with. Yeah, if we get two stars, I'm going to, I'll, I'll move to Skokie, Illinois, and become a haberdasher. That's, that's the second dream. Dish you wanted, the dish. No, it says one of two dishes of which is the risotto and the other dish for which I'd like a detailed description is the caramel brioche. There's 13 food questions yes. here, which is a lot. It is a lot. That's a lot. He loves it. No. He does. You didn't see him on, in the dining room. He was having such a great time. I've never seen that. The only time I've ever seen that excitement was when I waited on him at 11 Madison Park where he was effusive, as effusive as he was on the second time he came. Stop kidding yourself. Stop being Mr. Darkman. Stop kidding yourself. <laughs> he's telling himself he's getting two stars. Why? I know why. You know why. He may not know why, but it's just to, to guard against the disappointment at when he sees a paper and it is a two-star review. We're nearly there, which is great. No, it's really good. Oops. We're waiting for the big bad review. Big good review, hopefully. I'm in a good mood, though. Might not be later. Anxieties and sensitivities are a little high, and this article basically determines our future, in a sense. Review is out. I haven't read it. There are no stars attached to it. So we're all reading it for the first time. Imagination, here's the headline, imagination. Say hello to discipline. About a third of the way into a recent meal at the refined, quietly, elegant, new Tribeca restaurant Corton, something wholly surprising and altogether wonderful happened. I forgot about my food. I don't exactly mean forgot. I was aware of what I was eating. Juicy, sweet scallops with a sea urchin cream that showed a different side of the sea. The richest, most tender, most flavorful filet I've had in recent memory. But to appreciate these dishes fully, I didn't need to conduct a mental inventory of the disparate ingredients. I could just let them wash over me. And that surprised me because they were the work of Paul Lebron. <laughs> you know what? This is as good as it gets. All right, it's your turn to address the crowd here. Well, uh, the stars aren't up yet, right? So we don't know just yet. We <laughs> don't know just yet. But uh, if it is indeed what it sounds like, very well done to everybody here. But um, let's see. We don't know yet. This is what happened to me at Gilt. It came out, it came out. No, so we're just not, below. Like, no, like 11 Madison. Could, no. could still be too. I, I, I'm a doubter until I see it on the paper. Three stars, definitely. On order, six of yous. 
Two scallop, one garden, one soup, one foie, one scallop. Three squab, two lobster, and an amadai. Rock, I need bush plates. All right, it's official. Three stars on the internet, gentlemen. Just came out. Three stars on the internet. Come on out. Everybody, well done, extremely well done. Seriously, a lot of hard work went into this and uh, it's culminated with a great review that we knew we all deserved and worked hard for. The work is gonna get harder, but that's a good thing. We are moving in such a positive direction more than any other restaurant I've been a part of. I, I applaud you all. It was my feeling at Corton, um, and maybe empirically it's not true, maybe it's just the way the food came across. It was my feeling that Paul had taken some, um, some, st some steps towards simplifying his cuisine. I felt like the food at Corton, while still you know, very fanciful um, and extremely sophisticated in the best way, I felt it was directly appealing in a way that the food at Gilt wasn't. Pretty good shot. Yeah, I'm in the New York Times, bitches. Oh my darling, you must be jumping through the roof. Let me tell you, you know, it's it's kind of deja vu all over again. Now we have been legitimized by everybody in the city. I want Michelin stars here next year. I want two stars minimum here. First year. There's no reason we can't get it. It would be nice to see him relax a little bit more, if that's possible. It's only gonna get worse. Well, the food's just gonna get harder. You're gonna go from three entrees to six now. <laughs> Watch. I'm excited, it'll be fun. There are no menu changes for tomorrow, are there? Oh, yeah, there are. <laughs> now is when I really start to change the menu now. Now we start to really... Chicken for two, chicken all. Yes. yes. Like 3.999. Yeah, that was a glowing... <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was, that was yes, you're just four. below yes. the four star restaurant. He said that, he literally said that. We're worth more than three stars. And our customers know we're worth more than three. So I will not be happy until I achieve what I came to this country to achieve. Share a good story. He's an amazing chef. He has uh, uh, evolved and uh, find uh, maturity and his own style, and it's really uh, beautiful. I'm so excited and so happy for him that he actually finally found a home, and I'm really excited. We're eating dinner there tomorrow night.